What's up insiders? Today we're going to talk about formula for success. As you can see on my board, it's expired by Olympic Games, Winter Olympic Games. But the reality, this is your formula. I want you to think about your roofing business as molecular formula. And this is, by the way, not only for a roofing business, any construction business will apply the same rules. I want you to think about what components go into your business and why people are successful in so many different ways. I am want to show you three different business models. They are most popular business models in the roofing industry. And I want you to brainstorm what fits you and what you can improve to become a perfect roofing company. What area are you lacking? Let's go. For those of you who are new here, who don't know who I am, my name is Dmitry Lipinski. Used to have flooring business, sold it. Used to have roofing business for over seven years, have sold it. Uh, this is what I do today, every day. I teach and train hundreds of roofing companies all over the country. We do rebranding deals. We take companies from start to finish, and that's what I love to do. The most, I teach business. I believe that there's a five major components, if you will, in success today. Like, obviously, you have to have demand without demand nothing is going to happen i mean in the roofing business if hail or storm just came through demand is going to be huge everybody's going to be getting that low hanging fruit then you have to have customer service. So many roofers are not successful because they're not answering their phone calls. They don't have follow-up system. They not answering their emails and their Facebook messages. Even they say they want a business, but they're not set to actually get the business. And in this day and time, it's very important. Nobody wants to stay in line. Nobody wants to give you a second chance. They call you one time. You don't want their business. They go elsewhere. Here, if you don't understand customer service, you will struggle. Then we have branding. A lot of arguments on this channel. How important how important is branding? How important is your name, your logo, your colors? We're contractors. We're not, you know, Nike or Apple or McDonald's. You know, why branding matters? Well, because it does. And I'll explain why. And we talk a lot about it. And then there's also charisma. Your ability to sell, we see, is very important. We see a lot of people who can sell bullshit. Like, honestly, sometimes I'm puzzled how some salespeople are killing in this game. They work for shitty companies with a bad reputation. They have pretty much only business cards and some folders in front of them as equipment to sell. They don't drive wrapped vehicles. They, they just have amazing charisma and those people can sell ice to Eskimos. They, they just will nail it, any business they are. And then there is work. Of course, any chalk in the chalk, every roofer will argue that work is the most important thing. Do good work and people will refer you. Good, do good work and you always have a job. Not the case. If you only rely on your hands to be in business, you will never be successful. You will never scale. Ideally, what I think is you have to invest it all. You have to have a good brand. You have to have customer service. You have to have a demand. Sometimes you don't have a demand. If you're in a very small town, like Chicago last year has too many roofers and not enough hail damage. So for years, Chicago had plenty of work and it seems like it dried up last year. A lot of people went out of business. Why? Because they did not have demand or they did not understand demand for repairs, demand for retail work. They only were waiting for demand for hail damage per se. Now, you have to have a good brand for people to click and choose you from your competition and you have to do good work because there's only so far you can go if you're doing bad work. People will sooner or later catch up with the better reviews with you and they'll put you out of business. Now, this is typical storm chasing business model. You usually have really big charisma. A lot of storm chasers are operating in this space. So this is storm chasing business model. This is retail business model. And this is chalk and truck business model. And I'll explain to you why all three work and why all three hate each other and what they rely on. Storm chasers usually have very big charisma. They're go-getters. They don't care if someone slaps doors in their face. They just go, go, go. They're usually money-driven. Their charisma is very big. You give them for branding few folders, few business cards. They all show up at the right time. 
demand is big because where they, they, they usually go after work but their charisma is bigger so they go and their customer service is right here very small small circle they don't care about that their work is also very small in their business model you know they will find someone to do the work the biggest thing for them is sales they believe that sales fix everything and it works but as you can see it's very out of balance sooner or later poor craftsmanship catches up with them poor customer service catches up with them hopefully they don't commit any fraud with money hopefully they are good money managers so they don't ruin their business to the ground but this is their secret to success it's literally hey we go into that city they just get hit we're bringing 25 people with us we're gonna dominate it kudos to you if this is your business model comment below i want to hear from you not hating here just explaining kind of how it works now people here people are here people here is like how do they do it how is it even legal how do I compete with that? Well, build your charisma because you will need it. Now, here's your typical Chuck in the truck. Chuck in the, in the truck relies on his work. He is the hardest working guy in his mind. He thinks the work is everything. I've met a lot of Chuck and Sharks in my life and I meet more and more of them on social media. I have never seen a perfect job in my life. So demand is there, but they get away with it because people also always call them their customer services right here. It's kind of outside the box. A lot of people who rely on their work and that's all they have, they will not answer their phone call. When they do make mistakes they rarely come back because they don't charge enough they don't charge enough to invest in their branding to invest in their customer service all they rely on is their work the best way to explain it let's say you work for me like you work for real business for 25 dollars an hour and then you go on your own and you charge 35 bucks an hour company should charge three times what they pay labor should be only 30 percent of total bill but what's happening next is dangerous because while they're trying to help others they're actually screwing them and they don't even know it because they're not making enough to cover all liabilities they're not saving for hard times they're not saving for in case of emergencies and if they get sick if someone gets hurt usually things start going pretty bad pretty fast so this is a retail business model and retail is a little bit opposite from storm chasing so what you have here you have usually pretty big branding piece so these people have good good phone ring system they know how to make their phone ring they advertise they'll have billboards they have vehicle wraps they'll advertise google ads local like everybody knows them so branding is pretty good customer service is decent they do good quality work demand is always there the charisma is what's lacking they cannot charge because a lot of people here don't believe in going big they don't believe in getting rich for them money is almost evil it's the biggest self-limited belief here is that i should not be rich you know like rich people like filthy rich people are bad people that's that's what they believe by the way people here also believe that where people here believe that money is good money is everything it's also you know each of this business model have different traits to it i believe this is the best business model and if this model does not look after this guy or this guy they will be here so it's the shortest path to the perfect business model they just have to improve that charisma the self-development look at your own game what can you improve how you can outsmart all your competition i see a lot of retail guys and i see a lot of it online are hating fighting exchanging nasty exchanges um, uh, arguments with storm chasers and with people here you know attacking them calling them names listen stay in your game build amazing brand build amazing culture charge wherever the heck you want this group right here can be the highest price in town they can knock everybody out of the park because if you're solid the roofing brand people will always choose you also my advice to chuck in the trucks if you rely on your work please think about this you only have one body you have one life and time goes super fast i remember like today when i was 25 
I'm 38 today. Time goes so fast. I remember when I could work long hours, super fast. I remember my young years. I still can put long hours, but I know in 10 years from now, even five years from now, I will not be the same. Think about what will happen when you're sick. What will happen to your work? And please put your ego on the side. You're not the only one who can install shingles. You can hire a trainer, train young generations for it. Be a little bit smarter, invest in yourself, invest in customer service, start answering homeowners calls, start answering complaints. Don't run away from your problems because you're not perfect. You have problems just like any other business. It's hard to admit because your ego is so big. You think you're perfect, you are not. So my advice to you, invest in your business. Understand that business is not installation part. It's installation is very small. You are way out of balance. Your journey is to here. You're doing too much, you will burn out, and there's no exit strategy. And my advice to storm chasers, guys, I love you. I talk so much about you on this channel and everybody thinks that I hate storm chasers. I admire the hustle, I admire your energy and your passion to make a dollar, but don't let the journey to make another buck to lead you away from the consumer. Take care of the customer. Take care of the employees. Respect local markets. If you come to local market, respect other roofers. Understand that you are literally stealing bread from their table sometimes. You have to eat, but they have to eat too. Be very careful how you enter new markets about your culture when we start knocking other people's yard signs or stealing them. That's where it gets nasty. Be careful with that because um, you know, fist fight breaks out for a reason. I don't want to see in the news any violence in this industry. What's happening right now in Houston and every year when we have this major store, we see so many companies rushing in and fighting for their piece of the pie. It's just nasty. My recommendation is the same thing. Build local brands. Your city where you coming from probably have enough work for you to retire. No need to travel, no need. If you wanna do a lot of storm damage work, pick a place where it hails a lot and relocate there. Be part of that community. Don't be a stranger, don't be a traveler, and only go where you really need to go. Because there are so many markets that have plenty of roofers to take care of the job, even in the highest demand. If Minnesota gets hit with two inch hail, if 100,000 homes will get affected this year, we have plenty of roofers here. Now, if we have major storm down Florida, what we have in NOLA this year, just not enough local labor, go help there, please do. I have no problem with you guys traveling. What I have problem with when we have smaller events and we have too many storm chasers competing with all the local players and now it's just nasty, it's dirty, it's a lot of bad problems at the end of the season. That's what I was trying to avoid here. Comment below which one of these three you are. Comment below if you need my help. I love consulting calls. I do it every single day. If you need my help to get you to perfect balance business, that's what Roofing School is for. I hope to get on a call with you. We have very affordable plans. We'll plug for myself, for the school. Comment below, ask me a question I answer and read all my questions or most of them. Be respectful and I'll see you guys in the next video.